Hey guys, welcome to the 2 a.m. pipe on the patio. Today I'm smoking my Peterson 314 Spigot. One of my all-time favorite pipes. It has a P-lip on it. Yeah, I absolutely love this pipe. I am smoking some Gawith and Hogarth Balkan mixture. My tremendous tobacco. His tobacco is bone dry. It was bone dry when I jarred it up. And I'm going to show you how I, I've talked about this before. I don't know if I've ever actually showed you how I do it. But when I have a really dry tobacco, I put it in the, in the pipe. I don't know if you can see it in there. I'll take a, my finger and just put it in the, lightly on the, the hole. Take a deep breath and blow through. Let me start all over again. So take a deep breath. And you just blow into your pipe and your the natural moisture from your breath will nicely rehydrate this tobacco. I find that just one good breath will rehydrate it nicely. Any more than that, sometimes it'll get too wet. Yeah. Mm. What a great tobacco. Um, this tobacco is... Uh, Virginia and Latakia, some Orientals. There is a very teeny, tiny, tiny, itsy bitsy little bit of Latakia, uh, Latakia, Lakeland in it, if you look for it. I don't even notice it. I can kind of get it on a rec the retro hail. Other than that, I really don't notice it. But on the retro hail, I can I can kind of get it there. It's not like a major. Uh, Lakeland bomb or anything like that. It just a. If you're thinking about maybe trying a Lakeland, this may be a good place to start because it's just barely there. So this may be a good starting spot for somebody to tr to start on a Lakeland journey. Because it's hardly there at all. So this morning I got out. We have a bunch of bistro lights in the backyard. As you guys have seen some of those in the in the in my videos string lights in the backyard those are sturdy they're up there the winds don't bother those but i had some strung up on the house itself those got blown down the last we had the 55 mile an hour wind gusts here last week and it blew those half of those down off the 
the house. So this morning I had to get up and redo all of those lights and put them up much better. And they're up there good now. I don't think they'll blow down now. Hopefully they won't blow down now. But Mama will be happy. And, and if Mama's happy, I'm happy. And uh, so. I've actually thought about putting those lights up. All along there's, there's um, solar lights. All along the front of our house. All on the front and the sides and along the back part of the property. We have a, about a four-foot picket fence. And then the very back part, it's, it's uh, um, a wire fence that around the very back part, the part that belongs to the city, is a wire fence behind the brick wall. That brick wall that's behind us, that's where our property is. Behind that is all city property, but there's a section of that where we use. It's it's fenced off into our backyard. So it's actually, you know, I take care of it. I mow it. I, you know, and then beyond that wire fence is all city stuff. But I take care of that little section of property there that's it's not really ours, it's city property. But it's been fenced off for 50 years and, and the owners have always used it. So I just take care of it and mow it. And it's a nice little section of land. Uh, the dogs seem to love it back there. And it's not a big piece of property or anything, but I've been thinking about putting these, those little bistro lights all along the inside of the, our fence line, all along the front and the sides of the property. Just so when you come up to the house, you don't really see the lights. You won't see the lights. You'll just see the glow behind the, the top of the picket fence. It is pitch black up here at night. It is just, there's no lights up here. And I think it would look really neat. You know, if you set the, the bulbs right behind the picket, the pickets on the fence. Every fourth or fifth picket. It would look really neat. And just give a glow behind behind the fence. You wouldn't see the bulbs. They'd be right behind the fence. You could screw them right into the fence. I think that would look awesome. It would be a pretty penny probably to do the whole thing, but you know, I think there it's a twenty-five foot. 20 or 25 foot length of, of lights. So it would run quite a bit, but I think it would look awesome. And we got no lights up here at all. We got two floodlights on the front of the house that just shine down. And that's it. That's the only lights we have. We don't even have a porch light on this house. All we've got are those two floodlights on either side of the, the door. Uh, they're about 10 feet on each side of the front door. So I have a couple of solar, little solar lights that shine onto the front door of the house 
and then two more that shine onto the renter's door so that there's some light there when you you know you're trying to get in the doors but they don't really give a lot of light from you know when people are coming up they don't see you know it doesn't light up the doorway which is something we need to have an electrician do for us I'd like to have a, a light on the, the porch It is just pitch black at night out here. I like to put a little motion sensor on the outside of the barn here that shines out towards the driveway. So when cars come up, it lights up the driveway and people are getting in and out of their cars. Or if the bears come to visit. <laughs> We have uh, we have uh, cameras out here in the front. One out here uh, that shines on the driveway area, and then one that shines out on the pat on the front front door area, out onto the front lawn. And, and we get to see all the animals that come around. That's basically why we got it. What a great tobacco, and this stuff is just awesome. Hmm, just had a hawk fly by. We got a lot of hawks in our flying around here. We had a we've had a couple of eagles fly by over the, the two years we've been here, three years that we've been here now. Had a couple of eagles fly by. We get the turkey buzzards. They're always looking for food. We have wild turkeys. I just absolutely love where we live. I love the, all the all the nature we get out here. The, I come out in the front and we're over here on the side of the barn and there'll always be in the mornings there's deer just laying around with their little heads sticking up in their little ears. Today I got a picture. I sent it to Piper Dave this morning. Put it in right here. They were over on the side of the barn here. And then just to come out and they'll just, their heads will pop up and their deers, their little ears will be standing up and they're just all laying out under the trees. That's such a great, such a great thing. Yeah. bucks coming up here all the time. We got a couple of raccoons living out in the trees somewhere out here. I don't know where they're living. But at night they'll come out and scrounge around looking for stuff to eat. And the foxes, we got the, the two foxes living out here right now. 
and uh, I just love all the wildlife we have in our yard. And of course, we've had the bears a couple times come by, black bears. And they're just, uh, they fascinate me, the watching the bears and just, just knowing how, how powerful those things are. And of course, they're not grizzlies, they're not, you know, they're not as, I wouldn't want to tangle with one, but they're not grizzlies, they're uh, black bears and they tend to just run away when they see people. I just would want to run into one with babies, but I haven't seen any with babies yet, so. But they, uh, they come and they eat before they go into, uh, hibernation they come out and they eat the pine cones from our pine tree out here and they'll stand up and, and they'll reach out there and they'll start pulling down pine cones out of the pine tree and, and I guess they eat those to put on weight I guess the, the pine nuts are really good for uh, putting on weight for the bears when they're going into hibernation. But well, we had some, Sadie got some good video of one standing up out in front at the tree, just reaching up, pulling down pine cones and eating them. And then we got squirrels, you know, all over the trees and stuff, climbing up in the trees. It's just a, just a beautiful place. And uh, if you love wildlife, and I do. Yeah. Oh, they stay away from the, the house? <laughs> Good. I don't want squirrels in my attic or anything like that, but. raccoons but they've got enough cover here and trees that they're they're happy this is a wonderful tobacco man I just cannot get over how good this tobacco is I was telling you about that branch that cracked and fell yesterday. And I went down there and was trying to pull it out of the, it's stuck in the tree. It's a big old branch. And I was trying to dislodge it from the other branches and it, it you know, it's a big branch and it comes down like that and, and it, it landed on another branch so it's kind of stuck on there. And I couldn't get it off, I couldn't loosen it up. So it's just hanging there. And I gotta get that loose. I gotta get it, I mean, I gotta get it down because I don't want it falling on me or neighbors or anybody who might be out and about or the animals. 
so I'll probably have to. Hmm. Sounds like I'm about done with this. So I'll have to hook up a rope or something to it and hook it up to the back of the tractor and pull it down out of the tree. And when I do, I'll make sure and record it because I'm sure that hilarity will ensue. <laughs> Anyway, that's what's been going on here. But it's up, that branch is up too high for me to really get a good grip on. To give it a good jerk. So I'm gonna have to throw a rope on it or a chain or something and just jerk it and probably break it to get it to come off of there and uh, so I'll make sure I'm far enough away that it doesn't land on me That's an old, it's an old dead tree right there that, that fell out of it. That tree's gonna have to come down at some point. And it's a big tree. So I'm gonna have to get somebody out here to do that. I'm not going to tackle that myself. And when it comes down, we'll plant new ones. We'll put new ones out there small ones and 25 years from now there'll be new trees out there to take their place I got a Virginia creeper climbing up one tree so I gotta kill that or it's gonna kill the tree so I gotta cut that and then poison the vine or it's just going to take over the tree out there and spread to the other trees That pipe is done. So, boy, those Virginia creepers, they are everywhere out here. They're little vines that apparently they brought over from Asia as a uh, ground cover. And, uh, I think they have them in, I know they have them in North Carolina too. And they just took over. They just, I know I was driving along freeway in North Carolina the first time I went to North Carolina. 
kudzu. I think they're called kudzu is what they're called. In North Carolina, the ones in North Carolina are kudzu, I know that. I think these are a separate thing called Virginia creeper. The kudzu is like a an ivy, and it just climbs up the trees, covers the entire tree, kills the tree. Looks beautiful along, the, you know, this, all this ivy just covering the trees, but it kills the trees. And it's just taken over, and I can't control it. And it's it's one of those things where they bring over a a non-native species and plant it, and it just starts destroying everything and uh, so I'm trying to keep that out of my yard and uh, I've been battling it since we've moved in it keeps popping up and I keep you know pop up in different areas and I just have to keep I don't like spraying poison so I have to poison it each one individually. To kill it. And uh, you cut it, you cut it, then you, you uh, have these little bottles and you fill the bottles with poison and you put the bottle on the vine and it sucks the poison down into the vine and kills it. And uh, you know, it works if you can keep on top of it. But I can look at one right there, and it's probably ten feet up the tree right now. So I got to take care of that one. Got to go cut it down at the, towards the base of the tree, and then everything up above will die. And then where I cut it, I got to cut about a three-inch piece out of the vine. Kind of pull it away from the... It attaches itself to the tree. You got to kind of pull it away from the tree. Put one of those, you know, fill the bottle up with poison, put it on top of the, the vine. just sucks that poison down into the vine and down into the, the uh, roots and kills it. Keeps it from spreading out. You gotta use triclofor. And then we've got the same thing with the trees of heaven all over the, the back lot here. Down on the hill. Those things came from Asia. And they just are everywhere here. I'm trying to keep those out of my yard. So they'll just take over. And if you cut those down, they just spread out and 10 more come up so you got to kill them you got to use that trickle for put those little bottles on the the uh a branch or something and you know cut a branch put the bottle on it and fill it up it's just these little bottles about like that and you just put them on the the branch fill it with the trickle for and it sucks it down into the tree and kills it. And, uh, put several of them on each tree.
Anyway, I will catch you guys later. Have a good one. God bless.